originally uploaded on Odyssey. This is the YouTube version of the back of your head. Hello everyone. The day that I'm recording this is Thursday, the 21st of September 2023. And it's kind of funny, I was thinking about some subject matter and I listened to a gentleman tonight by the name of George Bruno. Some of you might know who he is. He's on YouTube. I suggest especially for the men, especially for the men, uh, you ought to listen to George Bruno. He's pretty good. Uh, talks about, you know, relationships, uh, trying to get your life together, things like that. Pretty good stuff. And he also has a thing on Sundays that he calls uh, Church of the of the Modern Man, I think is what it is. Something like that, where he goes through Proverbs is this going to be a spiritual video? Yeah, it is, actually. I have some water here. That's all this is. I um, thought I'd better have some. Uh, it's actually getting late in the evening now, and uh, this occurred to me. You know how these things happen. All of a sudden, I think, i got to do a video on that, even though I can't put it up on YouTube yet. So, a couple of days ago, I did a video, loaded it up on Odyssey, like this one is. And it was called Marvelously Made. This is kind of following along on that a little bit. And uh, it gets into some other details that I think you might find interesting. So, at any rate, I was listening to George Bruno and he brought up this thing about the firmament. I'm not sure exactly what he thinks the firmament is, but he made a point of it in a video. I think it was yesterday. I'm not sure, but... At any rate, he made a point of the firmament. And, of course, that's how the Old Testament, particularly the Torah, Genesis, in fact, talks about the expanse of heaven, the dome over us. And, of course, there's a big deal about that in the flat earth community, that, you know, the earth is a plane and that we're kind of all there is and there's a dome over us with all these different things, you know, the planets and the sun and you know, the constellations, whatever. I'm not here to argue that point. There's something else I want to show you. And I think this might be of a special interest to most of you. Now, the firmament, if you read it in, in Genesis, uh, it, it, it doesn't really tell you much. Uh, it just says it's there, and it's above the earth, right? Uh, if you look at the word in Hebrew, <laughs> you know I like to do that, right? Which is why I decided to do this video tonight. Because there's something that's in the word that I think, whether you believe it or not, is your, is your uh, point of view, okay? I, I'm not here to argue one way or the other. I just want to show you something, all right? So here's the word firmament in English. And it's translated as heavens or dome or the expanse when you look at it in Strong's or even you know in a Hebrew lexicon. This is the word in Hebrew here. It's resh uh, kuf yod ayin. Hmm. Wow. I got to looking at this word. By the way, it's it's pronounced rakia. Rakia. It's word 7549 in Strong's. <laughs> I think I'm going to blow some of you away here. You might have to redo your physics classes. What it means is, when you break it down into the Tarakan, it means his eye sees the back of his head. That's what it says. Yod is his, A and his eye, so his eye. So seeing... He sees with his conscious mind the back of his head. Now, there's a funny statement that Einstein came out with about the universe. And I've got it right here. It's on the board too, but I want to show you. I'm not I'm not pulling your leg. This is actually the case. I've known about this since I took my phys physics classes way back in the 70s I'm showing my age here but here it is okay if you can see it I don't know if you'll be able to see that it's coming into focus now okay so it's on the internet this is just one of the places you can find it 
So Einstein, who talks about, and you know, they're, the, the physicists have gone back and forth on Einstein's theories, you know, some have been kind of not turned around, but changed to some extent. But let's focus on this one here for a minute. So Einstein's actual quote is, if we had a powerful enough telescope, we would see the back of our own head. What did I just read in the Hebrew? His eye sees the back of his head. Or just, he sees with his mind the back of his head. Through his faculties, the back of his head. That's what kuf is. Bresh is the frontal area, including the eyes. Kuf is the back of the head. It's also a shepherd's crook, but a shepherd's crook goes around the back of the head when you're herding sheep to rein them in. Yod again is he, and A in is I. Where did, I, where did Einstein really get his idea that if you look out far enough into the universe, you'll actually look at the back of your own head? Where did he get that? I would submit that his first indication was in his own original Hebrew language, because he was Jewish, right? He was Jew, Jew, German Jewish. Some people say, well, he's Ashkenazi, and that's different. Well, still, he, he knew his Hebrew. Well, there it is. Again, you can look it up, 7549 Rakia in, in uh, Strong's, if you, let, if you wish. Now, there are a lot of different theories about what he meant when he said that. Okay, and, and I could go through a lot of them. It could mean, people have talked about, well, uh, you know, the universe is curved so that, you know, when you look out there with gravity and with all these other things that are going on, you know, that you look out there and it comes back around. And, and there probably is some truth to that. But I want to come back to the idea of the firmament. The firmament. Because this is the word for firmament. It kind of goes along with everything I've said about who we are, where we come from, what our destiny is, where we're going. Not listening to these Darwin, Marxist, social engineering, Fabian socialist, um, to Frankfurt School type people that want to denigrate who what, and what you are and what family you're a part of. And you know, I'm, those of you who've watched me for a long time know that I really talk about that. And in this last video I did before this one, the uh, marvelously made, I talk about my doubts on the, on the theory of evolution. Okay, and I bring in uh, uh, a professional organic chemist and some of his work, and I talk about that. Well, the whole point of all that I'm doing is, including this, is there's something else going on with us. Remember when. God in Exodus talked to Moses, and I know we could argue about, oh, well, did this really happen? Or That's not the point. These are ancient writings. Let's just consider this for a minute. And Moses asked his name. It's commonly translated, commonly said, I am that I am. And I've talked about that before. When what it really means is, I will be whom I will be. Um, and that causes a lot of difficulty with a lot of monotheists, uh, those types of things. Uh, it's a it's a problem for you know, a lot of people. Even uh, Dr. Michael Heiser uh, had a little issue with that, but he did point out. Dr. Michael Heiser did uh, bless his heart. He died, of course, uh, about a year or so ago from cancer. But uh, he talked about the angel of the Lord when it was appearing before Israel, and. Uh, Moses and, and those people were said uh, that this this angel I my name is written in him therefore do everything he says because he, my name is in him going back to I will be whom I will be so this this is a lot different than most people think so taking that into consideration and who you are and I mentioned something about you know maybe we've been around a lot longer than we're willing to admit Maybe not in this particularly, and I don't like calling it a fallen form. It's more of a form that's just been more or less uh, corrupted because of some outside influences, right? But it's supposed to be eventually perfected, right? 
who are we really and what do we stand for? What about Psalms 82 and the Council of the Gods? What about all this? What's going on here? I don't want to get into whether the earth is, you know, the, the sum of the universe with the firmament above that and the gods outside that and sits on a throne above everything, but that's kind of the ancient concept. Well, here we are now where Einstein is saying, if you could have a powerful enough telescope and look out into the heavens, you would see the back of your head. Why wouldn't you see God? Why wouldn't you see something else? But you'd see the back of your head. Do you understand not just the physics importance of that, but the theological importance of that? And your relevance, indeed, how marvelous you are in all that is. This is going to be a short video. I'm not going to get into a whole lot of detail. I submit again that while Einstein and his mathematical equations may have realized that you know the universe is curved or whatever it was he was up to, He knew this, and he used it to try to figure out maybe what's going on in the universe and explain it mathematically. Can you, can you get the picture of how important this is? This is said in Genesis, the word firmament, Rakia, 7549. He sees the back of his head. When you look into the firmament, that's what you would see, the back of your head. I won't go into it any further than that. I'll just leave that with you, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to do some follow-up live streams eventually on these last two videos uh, that I've done, and also on some current events, although, you know, I'm getting away from that a little bit. I mean, there's so many people out there talking about that. If you don't know the difficulties we're facing right now and the awful situation we're in, and yet the hope that we can have, you need to spend some time doing that. But I'm, I'm concentrating on these things right now. So I hope you found that interesting. I hope you get the gist of what I'm saying. I will be whom I will be. You look out into the universe, and in the word firmament, it says that you will see the back of your head, just like Einstein said. Y'all take care, okay? Out for now.